Hey everyone, Flo from Afterlensy, and today we're going to talk about the Siri Jupiter Micro Cine Primes. So I recently received the full set of the Jupiter series, including the new 75 and 100 mm and in this video I want to talk about my experience shooting with them, what I like and don't like about these lenses, and whether or not I would recommend them. And as always, before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. So Siri is a brand that I've heard about for years, but I actually never got the chance to try the lenses until a few months ago when I tried the Jupiter 24mm. And it quickly became one of my favorite lenses. I love the look that I was able to get on my 6K Pro and also on the new 6K full frame. And I also really enjoy the shooting experience. Over the years, I've used and tested so many lenses, but this one really stood out. So when they asked me if I was interested to receive the full set, of course I said yes. Now full disclaimer, Siri did send me these lenses for me to keep, but they do not get to modify the content of this video, and these are my honest opinions. There are a few reasons I maybe want to go with these lenses. Aside from being a full set of cine lenses, these are full frame and macro, two things that I didn't have in modern glass. Over the past few months, I've been using these lenses to shoot anything from documentary style content to landscape and even personal content. And in terms of cameras, I use them of course with the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, which is full frame, and the 6K Pro, which is a Super 35 sensor. I also use these lenses in a run and gun slash handheld setup, especially for landscape or personal content, but also with fully rigged setups, especially for documentary work. And as always, you can find all the gear listed in the description below. So the Jupiter set is made of five lenses, the 24mm, the 35mm, the 50mm, and the new 75 and 100mm. The original three lenses, so the 24, 35 and 50 are T2, and the latest two, the 75 and the 100mm, are T2.8, and they are all manual lenses. These lenses are made for full-frame cameras, but what makes them really special is their macro capabilities. Their close focus distance is 0.24m. You can get them in both EF and PL, these are the EF versions. But you can of course use adapters and use them on different mounts like I did on a new 6K, which is L mount. These lenses are also super well made and very sturdy. And in terms of weight, they range from 850 grams to 1.2 kilos, depending on the focal length. And to get an idea of their size, here are them compared to my Canon zooms and next to my Meki S35 lenses. They have a 92 mm filter thread and the front diameter is 95 mm. And also depending on the combination that you get, you also get a very nice custom case. And in terms of price, you can get them for $1,000 each, but obviously if you get a set, it will make them cheaper. At the time of recording this video, I actually don't have the price of the 75 and 100 mm, but I don't think it'll be that different from the 24, 35 and 50. There's also CineZoom, the 28 to 85 mm T 3.2, but I haven't had the chance to use it yet. And of course, you can find more in-depth info on the lenses in the link in the description below. First of all, the image. As soon as I use a 24 mil, I love the image instantly. It just feels right from the bokeh to the overall look. Um, I was very pleased with the images I was able to capture. And when I received the set, it was the exact same thing. It didn't matter if I was using the 24, 35, 50, 75. They all look very similar and I was happy with every single shot that I got. It's always hard to explain why I like a certain look over another, but these lenses have that sort of like creamy look and they're definitely cinema lenses. You see that as soon as you start shooting with them. They also have a lot of character while still being able to be used for a wide variety of projects. And of course, on top of the original three, having the 75 and 100 mil give you that compression as well on top, which to me accentuates their character and look. I also found these lenses to be quite good in terms of contrast, like the way they were able to retain details when I was shooting in harsh light. For example, when I was shooting that mini documentary, I was shooting in a full like afternoon and I was facing the sun directly. And even when I was doing that, I was still able to retain a lot of details in the shadows and a lot of contrast. I also find these lenses to be quite sharp, even at T2.8, especially for the 24, 35 and 50 mil. When you use them on a cinema camera 6K, you can really see the details on people's skin or on the rock face, for example. Next is a shooting experience, and this is very important for me. I love using these lenses. The rings are super smooth and precise, and they have the right amount of resistance and rotation. I found these lenses to be equally good using them run and gun style, or also fully rigged up. 
And the fact that they're also the same size made it very easy to change matte boxes or to change lenses throughout the shoot. For example, when I was doing that mini documentary, I used a full set, uh, or at least four of them, and I was able to change the matte box or the filters or the lenses on my own very quickly. And of course, we have to talk about the macro capabilities. This is a feature that makes these lenses very versatile in my opinion. It's quite rare to get cine lenses of a high quality and affordable, but when you actually add on top of that being full frame and to be able to shoot macro, it's quite impressive. And to me, shooting macro is quite fun. And it's something that is both um, interesting and addictive. When you use that on a 24 mm which is the first lens that I've tried, I was already very impressed. I feel some insects, for example, and or I think I filmed the snail as well and some grass, and I was very impressed. But when you put that feature on a 100 mm or 75 mm it is very, very impressive. And you don't have to use it. This is a feature that doesn't really impact like the overall like look of the image. Um, and you're able to use this for documentary work or anything that you want. It's good to know that you have it. You don't need to use it, but at least you know that close focus is not a problem. Next is full frame. So having full frame lenses means that you can obviously use them on full frame sensor cameras, but also on Super 35 cameras, for example. So in my opinion, it makes them more versatile and a better investment. I never felt the need to shoot full frame. I've always shot with the 6K and the 6K Pro, which are S35 cameras. But now that I've got the new cinema camera 6K, which is full frame, this is a very nice addition to my kit. Then we have the aperture. These lenses are either T2 or T2.8, and this is plenty um, to shoot anything from interviews to documentaries, even low light, especially on full frame sensors. T2 on a full frame sensor is quite impressive as it gives you very shallow depth of field and combined with the macro capabilities, you are able to shoot some very, very immersive and impressive images in my opinion. So another thing that I wanna talk about is consistency. Um, a lot of the times with affordable cine glass, you can get a bit of difference between focal length, for example, in color and contrast. But with these ones, I didn't notice anything different at all. And to be honest with you, for example, when I shot that mini documentary about climbing, um, when I was looking at the footage, I couldn't really tell which lenses I was using. Of course, there's a difference in field of view and compression, um, but it's a good thing because from shot to shot, I wasn't straight away able to tell if I was using the 50 mil or the 75 or the 35 mil. They look very consistent across the whole range. Next is build quality. These lenses are very well made, like I said before. Everywhere you touch is pretty much all metal, obviously, except for the cap and um, the bottom, but it feels very, very sturdy. The rings have a nice kind of like hard stop. As soon as I started with the 24 mil, I could tell straight away that I really liked the way they felt, that there's nice weight and feel to them. And whilst I have it here, these caps are also great. Um, I've used several caps um, in the past with different lenses. These are probably the best ones that I've used. Um, they just stay in place. They're kind of like hard enough to pull, but very easy to put back as well. And they do protect the lenses quite well. So this is a nice touch. Then we have the 95 mil front thread. Um, I've said it before in previous videos, I like lenses that have a 95 mil front thread because I'm able to use my Nisi Matbox C5 straight away which is pretty handy for me and actually saves me time. And finally, the case. As you know, I'm a big fan of cases. That one is really nice, it's a good size. I like the layout, the way they are kind of like arranged and I also like that it's not just a black foam. They have like that kind of like silver fabric on it and I really appreciate that. And I like cases because they are very useful in my opinion, um, obviously to store lenses, but also to protect them and very easy to take them on set as well. When I was shooting that mini documentary about climbing, I grabbed my timber bag with the camera and all the accessories and the full case with me and I was able to just put that in a corner and kind of go back to the case and just swap lenses over it and it was very quick and very handy. And I also like when lenses are put sideways and not necessarily like from top down um, because I always end up like grabbing the, the cap so this is quite nice to be able to just pull the lenses from the actual body. Another thing that I want to add is that this is a full set. So obviously the 24, 35 and 50 mil were already very versatile, but when you add the 75 and 100 mil, you can pretty much shoot anything that you want, whether you use a full frame camera or a super 35 camera. This is a reason why that I wanted to shoot a mini documentary before I had to make this review, because I wanted to be able to, to see and gauge like the range that I was able to get but also to test out the macro capabilities and the fast aperture in a real world situation. I was able to focus on people or B-roll accessories and overall I was very pleased with them. 
So it was to me a way to test them or to do an earlier test to see if I could actually use them on my own proper documentary shoot. To be honest with you, there's nothing that I don't like about these lenses, um, but there are a few things that I want to mention. First of all, the 92mm front thread. So most of the time when I use cine glass, I'm going to use a matte box and cinema filters anyway. But I do like the opportunity and the ability to use cine glass on run and gun more handheld setup like I used to do with the 6K Pro. And that's fine because it has internal NDs. Um, now with the new 6K full frame, there's no internal NDs. So I have to rely on a VND. I've got an EC1, which I love. But the problem is because of the 92mm front thread, it becomes very hard to adapt. So 95mm is a front diameter. But 95mm in a filter thread is common, 86mm is common, 82mm is common, 92 not so much. So what I had to do is actually get an adapter, and I found this one online, I'll link in below, that allows you to adapt a 95mm filter on any lenses that are between 82 and 92mm. And it works, but it's just a bit bulky. So I really wish that the filter thread was either like 86 or 95 mil and I'm, I know there's a reason why it's probably not possible but I just wanted to pull that out because if um, you intend to use them with a VND it might be a bit harder than you think. But other than that 95 mil on the Nisi matte box, great. The next thing that I want to mention is the weight difference between the original sets, so the 24, 35 and 50 and then latest to the 100 mil and 75 mil. Um, there's quite a big difference between the 100 mil and the 24 mil. I think there's 400 grams between the two, which can be an issue if you use them on a gimbal or anything like that. So for me, it's not a problem, but it's something that I wanted to mention. And because this is a lens review, there is also a tiny bit of CA. Uh, it's barely noticeable. The only way I actually saw it is because I was zooming in on the 6K files. Um, but it's, yeah, it's nothing to worry about. And finally, I found the new 100mm and 75mm to be a little bit soft wide open. So I spend most of my time shooting at 3.2 um, to be able to get that sharpness back. But to be honest with you, shooting with a full frame camera in 6K at T2.8 was a bit much anyway. Yes, I would definitely recommend the Siri Jupiter series. Their look is beautiful. The shooting experience is great. And the fact that these are both full frame and macro makes them really useful for a wide variety of projects and cameras. I also think that their price makes them quite competitive and affordable for the quality and features that you get. So I would highly recommend them for anyone looking for a full set of cinema glass. I think this set will actually become a main one from now on and when it comes to modern glass because I'm able to use them on both the new 6K full frame and my 6K Pro. That's it for me for today guys, if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Also feel free to check out my two ebooks Freelance Documentary Filmmaking and Travel Cinematography where you can find a streamlined but comprehensive overview from pre-production all the way to marketing built on years of my own experience shooting short documentaries and travel videos around the world. And if you are interested I'm also doing filmmaking mentoring sessions when you can ask me anything about a wide variety of topics.